Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Good real. Bitcoin's here to stay, and you need to be a part of it. All right, well, I'm going to do a quick question and answer for all of our panel here. Um, uh, does anybody have questions for any of us? Raise your hands. All right, you, sir? So my question is focused on NFTs. You just mentioned you work in Gavista, about 950. We've seen that over the past couple of months, NFTs is, has been on the lips of almost everyone. Now, but the question is, when you look into the internet, when you look at all these different NFT um, ads that you see, they are very expensive. And um, you will agree with me that most of your followers are technically people who have little or who did not have sound knowledge about um, the whole world of cryptocurrencies. And most people are operating, I will say, maybe below the budget of 50K, 50,000 euros or so. So the very first question is focused on assessing the value of an NFT for the market. These NFTs are technically different from Bitcoin and the we can go on the exchanges to see how people are trading. So the first question is how do you assess the value of an NFT before you get into it? When you look at the NFT that um, Carl bought for almost um, a million, if he wants to sell that, I technically as a buyer can type the, N type the value of that NFT to the owner of the NFT. I know if Carl wants own it, I will be ready to pay maybe times 10 just to get that particular NFT. But to most people who are following you, they are not that um, financially sound. So, and most NFTs are expensive. So how can you, what criteria can one really follow to assess the value of NFT? NFTs? That's the first thing. Second, if your funds are operating under the budget of let's say 50K, Will you advise them to get into NFTs or for the start, you will prefer them to get into Bitcoin? Okay, so the, the question has two parts. Does anybody want to take that one? Um, yeah, I, I take the second part. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you, uh, if, I, if I understood you correctly, uh, um, you said if they have uh, under 50,000 available to invest, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so, so if, if we go from, from the case that they don't know anything right now about crypto, they don't know really, they don't understand what Bitcoin is, they don't understand what Ethereum is, and for sure they don't know what NFT is besides there's a JPEG, you know, so um, then I would definitely not, um, not tell them to get in the first place now directly into NFTs. So I, I, I would tell them buy a little bit of Ethereum, buy a little bit of Ethereum, uh, keep a little bit money on the side so that you can buy the dips when it's dipping, you know, so and that your dollar cost average um, are on, on the way up or down. And uh, and then on the side, start learning about NFTs and try to understand NFTs. But I would never go to somebody and say, oh, you don't know anything? Just buy an NFT. <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, most NFTs will probably go to zero. Um, the reason, uh, how to assess which NFT has the value? Well, it's all subjective, right? How, how do I, how do you assess that uh, the, 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 the Mona Lisa has a $35 million value, right? How do you assess that? It's all subjective. But NFTs is even worse because it's not just the artwork, right? Most NFTs is not about the art. It's about access to something else. For example, um, the, the Board Aid Biop Club, right? They give you access to clubs, to dinners, to, to, to a wealthy people. Right. Uh, that's why that's why the board a Biop club is doing so well. Um, other uh, other uh, NFTs such as uh, Kongs, uh, these uh, these ugly looking uh, Kong, uh, what's it called? G gorillas, right? That are Elephant Kongs. Ones. Yes. They they provide you with income like three hundred thousand dollars a year if you own an, a Kong. So uh, well, that's <laughs> yeah, no, trust me, crazy. Exactly. You're sure crazy. That we're not promoting a scam. It's crazy. No, it's crazy, right? I saw it on Instagram. No, it's not. It's a different one, not yeah. Alpha Kong. Ah, okay, not I was thinking it's Kong. Kong. No, it's different Kongs, one. right? Uh, okay. And so, yeah, and so that's why it has such a high value, right? But every single NFT has uh, value because of, of different attributes. Now, why people go crazy over these NFTs? Why are the people like lining up to buy NFTs? Well, 
Well, what? <laughs> yes, of course. But here's the, here's the key thing. It actually works like a lottery, right? When you go and buy, uh, uh, don't don't say this in, <laughs> to to the regulators because if the regulators figures this out, they'll be like shutting down NFTs really fast because they don't want they don't like uh, lottery uh, people gambling, right? But it works like a lottery, right? When you go to to buy one of those NFTs, which has a limited selection. And then only a, only a few of them are like very rare, has very, very rare attributes. That rare NFT can make you uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. So that's why people are like, oh my God, I've got to buy this NFT and hopefully I could get lucky and get that one rare one when it gets minted and everybody's about to buy it. I might get that rare one. I'm going to buy that. So, so th that's why people are so big into NFTs and willing to go, okay, uh, there's new collections coming out. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until it just comes out and then I'm going to hit the buy button and buy and see what happens. See if I get uh, one that's really, really rare and I, I make a lot of money. So this is, this is why NFTs are exploding so well. Now, of course, this can't go on forever because every, the, the limit of people's creativity uh, to, to create NFTs is unlimited. So there's unlimited amount of NFTs that can exist. So eventually this will come to an end. But for now, um, this is a new space and there's only about, about a quarter of a million people in the space that I can actually go out and buy an NFT and yet it's exploding crazy. So that, th that means we have a lot more people to come in, but at the same time, there will be an end to this, right? Because eventually that, that th it will be, the market will be oversaturated with NFTs and nobody will know where to buy what. So that's the problem. But right now it's still big. And it's still going to grow, but you can't really assess uh, which NFT is going to do well. That's the hard thing. I've always said that when, when, before. I I told people before NFTs were very big. Back in August of 2019, I said NFTs are going to be the next biggest thing. The only problem is which one you're going to buy. <laughs> right? That's the only problem, right? So yeah, assessing which one to buy is the difficult thing. I'm still learning myself how to assess which NFT will do well. And what I've learned is the more attributes and the more uh, features that, that NFT can provide individuals, the more uh, value it will have. So for example, if it has staking, if it has, um, if it could be used as an icon, if it could be, um, you know, displayed somewhere where everybody could see it, if it could be, um, if it could, uh, like, if it has some rare attributes so that you get access to uh, some of us, right? Some of us, uh, uh, the, the crypto people or other things, right? Any kind of value thing that people value, then um, it's the value of that NFT will rise. So if you know that the NFT has a, a value for the majority of the people that are, do have access to NFT space, then that NFT will do well. So that's the key thing that I'm looking at. I, can say something. Mm -hmm. I would say that I agree for most part with what he says. However, I think there's a very big difference between the value of an NFT for you and the value in terms of you know, monetary, how much it's going to be worth. Because I would say if you're getting into NFTs now, I think the, the non-riskiest way is to just buy something that you think has a lot of value to you. Like, for example, community with DaVinci might something be something that's really valuable to you. But to actually look at the market value, it's, it's just, I, I would say, almost impossible to know whether or not the value actually do well because it's just a marketing game. So even if he has 80,000 people in Discord, it can just be that they'll buy once. Everybody's excited. It doesn't mean it will sell for a second time. You know, and you can say, oh, yeah, but the perks, this but doesn't mean it'll sell for a second time. And that's the thing right now with NFTs, I think, that it's... People always think, yeah, I just have to buy quickly because it'll, yeah, everyone's the first flip. And so what's the value? Well, it's just what somebody wants to pay most of the time day one. And some of the more established ones like the, the crazy crypto punks. And so even them, some of them might be hard to sell for the price that they bought them at. If you look at the right time frame, it's just right now it's a, a hype thing. People are thinking, yeah, I, I definitely want to have this for the benefits. At some point or another, maybe people will think, oh, well, if all these people are having this NFT for these benefits, or well, maybe next time, all the same people have the same, like if you're talking about a community. If everybody, let's say all these people have the same NFT in two different forms. So we have like the community number one, community number two. Which one are you going to join? I guess they're the same thing, right? It's just a different artwork then. So which one of them more valuable? They're the same. But then maybe one was a, a price of five Ethereum, the other one was one. So 
because maybe in some cases why right, people would, would value the, the NFT because it was the first collection, right? They might have, but it's all subjective, right? To what people are want. So that's the thing, right? NFTs uh, are 90% subjective. And then there's also the, the um, there's a few a little bit parts with uh, what, what it provides people. Does it provide anybody with an income? Like for example, of course, the Kongs, right? Is an example of what it's not, not about the image. It's about, oh, I could get an income. I could make, believe it or not, bananas for my Kongs and sell those bananas and make an income. It's, it's ridiculous, right? But <laughs> it, it, that's, what, that's what, how it works. And uh, I, I'm still shocked by it myself, but that, it, this is, it works. And people are, are buying those NFTs. Can say someone? Yeah, sure. Yep. So uh, about the question he said about the portfolio, should someone with like 50K or less be buying NFTs? Uh, first of all, I think you should definitely establish yourself a, a crypto portfolio before you start investing in these things like a long-term portfolio. Um, that's much more important for long-term. However, I do think there's a lot of opportunities with minting NFTs. If you can mint for like 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, potentially if you can sell within the first few weeks, you can sometimes, not always of course, but you can sometimes like two, three, five or 10 X your money. Not every project will do that of course, but if you're doing the right research, then potentially you can take a small amount from this 50K and allocate it to mints once you've got your portfolio set up and you can potentially 10 to 20, 20 maybe X over the course of a month. And if you keep rinsing and repeating that, take your initial capital out and then go back to minting, you can actually do quite well. So. A lot of NFTs launch at 0 0.2 min price. Sometimes they go up to five Ethereum in the first week. So I know it's difficult to get a whitelist spot, but definitely it's an, a very easy way to grow capital. And you can take this money from uh, the profit from NFTs and put it back into your original portfolio. And over the next six months, I don't know when the NFT hype will like die down, but definitely during this time, it's, it's still good. So it's a great way to, to grow your uh, long-term portfolio by minting NFTs. Yeah, and that that shows that it's a lottery system. Basically, yeah, exactly. people people are interested in winning that lottery of uh, hey, I'm going to get that NFT, and then I'll be I'll be rich because it, it'll it'll double overnight. Basically, once it becomes public. So yeah, that's that's a key thing about uh, NFTs. Anyways, uh, any more questions? Uh, okay, um, you sir. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I actually wanted to uh, use you guys to say about about. Uh, uh, NFT tool. Uh, recently, I came up with uh, an idea, then uh, I went and convinced all the uh, African uh, athletes who are record, record holders. And uh, uh, basically, I wanted to create an NFT uh, because, uh, like, there are about 37 people, and most of them are already uh, uh, athletes who are holding record in one way or another. But I really don't want, I, I really don't know how to go about it. Uh, we have already, I have already discussed with them. They are very happy about it. And some of them didn't even believe that their video or maybe when they are breaking the record can be can be sold. And uh, I told them that uh, you may make more money than what you made when do it, when, when you broke that 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 record. And uh, they are very happy about it. I tried to reach out to most of you guys, but it's like you guys are not reading any message. <laughs> <laughs> so the, What's the question, man? So the question is that I, like, I, don't want, I don't know how to go about it. I have the community with myself right now, but uh, uh, I really don't know what to do about uh, with that community. So you, you basically don't know uh, how to build this technically, right? Exactly. Yeah. So the answer for this is very easy. First of all, it's great effort. And the answer is come to bonus because we are, <laughs> we are, we are exact platform which will facilitate and do all of this for those athletes. And since you bring them, you will be also a winner and you have no headache because the hardest thing to be is a founder. I mean, I'm dying every day. It's like a war. So it's, I'm going through this war for you. So please join, please uh, talk to Rabia or Ashi somewhere around. They will come to you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, awesome. Okay, one more question. Okay, in front yeah, here. I'm a long time Dash toddler. And I just would like to, if any of you have researched Dash and what your thoughts are on it, I love the fact that it is 
really been out there and used in the real world and I kind of it is um, it's so strange that it kind of hasn't really grown like we thought that it would. What are, anyone got any good feedback? Yeah, uh, Dash was one of my favorite coins because of the the model of um, basically how they how their governance model was right. Basically, they have they have a percentage going to the development team to build the, the application and so forth. Uh, unfortunately, um, there is a, um, a feature right because it's um, it has anonymous feature, right? And the problem with that anonymous feature is that you have to turn it on, and and that's you might think, well, what's wrong with that? Well. Can you imagine going into the bank wearing a ski mask to withdraw money so you could be anonymous? Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll, you'll be just, they'll be suspicious that you're here to rob the bank, right? Yeah. So uh, that's the problem with uh, anonymity on, on, on with crypto is that it's got to be always on right at the very beginning or else it's not going to work because nobody's going to turn it on because they're afraid. Like, for example, if you um, if you use a mixer for your Bitcoin, right, a, a Bitcoin mixer so that you can prevent where to anybody tell, determining that you actually um, own that Bitcoin, most exchanges will ban you from using it. If you from from sending that Bitcoin there, they'll just say, no, we won't accept it. Also, if you use coin joins, they will also uh, prevent you from accepting it. They won't accept the Bitcoin now. Um, Bitcoin has been upgraded to using um, Schnorr signatures, which is vastly superior to what we're using right now. It's a new new type of encryption, right? Because Bitcoin's encryption <coughs> is upgradable, um, and, um, and and what it does is it allows for um, for 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 the fungibility to be hidden. So, for example, if somebody marks a Bitcoin as bad, you and they use uh, Schnorr signatures, that Bitcoin could be mixed together with a whole bunch of other transactions. So no one could determine whether or not it um, it, it it came from a, a, a bad source, right? Where the, that Bitcoin went to, basically, they don't know who sent it, right? And so that's a key thing. So because that's important, because we don't want to destroy the fungibility of Bitcoin. And you can say, well, can't the, the exchange ignore that in the future? No, because the reason why is because the miners are trying to re reduce the space that takes up inside of the block. And so the miners will be ones who are doing, who are merging the transaction together so that they can reduce the space inside of a block. So it won't be you doing it, it'd be the miner doing it and thus providing you with the anonymity automatically. So that's the problem with Dash today. It has lost, it, it has lost that race, the anonymity race uh, by, uh, because, of, because of Bitcoin's upgrade. So basically, yeah, it, its future is probably not very blue. by Shiba instead. <laughs> 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 well, Shiba has different different um, reasons why it, it's doing it's going to do well, but that's that's another uh, that's for a story for another topic. And it's like a Shiba meetup. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, sure. I would say as well that before the biggest news, I believe it was in Venezuela as well that Dash was used. Look. Yeah. And I, I covered the news at that time, but then afterwards, I, I won't be able to name one thing that they've actually done that's really out there that I cover, you know. So it, it's basically lost its, oh, uh, Dash is going to be the cash, the Bitcoin cash type of thing everywhere. Then it never did anything. So so honestly, I don't, I'm not a big fan anymore of Dash at all. I don't, and usually I, I used to cover it quite a lot back in the day. So, but now never. So I don't, uh, it's not so active. So I agree, the marketing has died yeah. as well. Yeah. So any other questions? One more question? Okay, sir. Here. More of a lifestyle question, but cool. I'm assuming all of you guys have 99 reach that somewhere around there of your net worth of crypto. How are you paying how are you going about your daily lives? Like if you're putting like just is it very easy here in Dubai or yeah. Oh, you can take that yeah. one. Well <laughs> <laughs> first of all, it's quite easy actually. Well, it is easy uh, in uh, if you want to buy luxury items actually almost all the the car dealerships and watch dealerships all of them except crypto and if you want to rent boats it's also crypto but if you go to the grocery store obviously they don't take crypto uh, or in the most restaurants but that's where casta comes in 
Um, so uh, me and Carl, we're gonna solve that with uh, Casta because the the gateway between fiat and crypto is not very easy, and um, even if it's quite easy in Dubai, if you go to other countries like Sweden and um, actually most countries in the world, it's very very hard to use your crypto. It's even hard to use cash, so you cannot even take your crypto exchange to cash and then go somewhere because cash for example in sweden it's almost completely banned like you you're basically a criminal if you have even like a hundred dollar bill in sweden which is crazy uh, but many countries are moving towards that cashless and um, it becomes even harder then to use your crypto so um yeah that's why casta will make a huge difference and um we want to make sure that people can use cards and also just uh, tap their phone and um, you know just send crypto between each other for instantly and for free and uh, just essentially make the experience in crypto easier because right now obviously we are used to crypto but mainstream people they they immediately say no because it's too hard they'd rather they would rather use the dirham or the dollar and that's the problem it's easier to use the old system rather than the new system and as long as that's the case, mainstream adoption will not happen. So the new system, which is crypto, has to be easier and more convenient and safer than uh, the old system. And when all of these things are in place, that's when mainstream adoption will happen. Maybe it's five years, maybe 10 years, but with cost, I hope we can speed it up a little bit. Uh, I, I had actually, uh, that was my same thought, you know, when, when I bought my first Bitcoin, I was like, okay, I have no Bitcoin. How do I get this back into cash, you know, and then pay stuff with that? Oh, sorry. Yeah, w uh, pay stuff with that. So and, um, so, and that was the reason why I actually went into the exchange business uh, and doing OTC deals um, to convert my Bitcoin back into cash, you know, and obviously take a commission on that. So and um, over the years, so for myself, for me, it's quite easy, you know, to get back uh, from crypto into cash because I've built um, most, yeah, mostly all around the world, a network of people that I know now, you know, that I can just write on WhatsApp, you know, and I know I go to this country and I warn them and say, hey, I'm coming next week. I need $10,000 in cash. You know, they're like, okay, no problem. I'm here. Just tell me when you're here, I bring you the cash, you know. So, and uh, we, we all have kind of these connections or we help each other uh, with the connections that we have to get this converted back into the fiat system. And uh, otherwise there are platforms, for example, there's Paxful, there's local Bitcoins, where you can also just send your Bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies and then um, on a peer-to-peer -peer base with somebody else on the other end, uh, that person can send it to your bank account and from there you pay then your rent and other stuff. So there are uh, there, uh, like, around some corners some ways how you can always get it back so we are used to it that's that's why for us it's it's just normal to do it you know so but obviously for somebody starting out it it can sound complicated especially if you don't know where to look now this is the only guy that has doesn't have a bank account yeah <laughs> yeah, that, this, yeah it's it's Most a fact <laughs> yes. have a bank account. I, I i don't have a bank account right now because uh i i, I was a high net worth client of a bank in georgia but i must say high net worth is three thousand dollars per month and beyond for them so and uh, so and uh, and i started putting in um starting last year so normally i did not use my bank account a lot by he here spending in the dubai mall a lot of money there i started to use it a lot uh, i started with like 20k 40k 50k every month until i got almost to 100k and my bank did not really like that so that i was spending here so much money and then i canceled my bank account and since then i don't have a bank account anymore so it's now uh, like four months yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the banks. <laughs> I have one more answer to you, which is actually a very simple solution. Like, for example, in Europe, there is Binance. If you are on Binance, then you can actually apply for the Binance card. So you get a kind of credit card which will start deducting from your Binance portfolio. And the same, it's coming now with FTX. And also Crypto.com was very famous for and this. Casta. And Revolut. And the next revolution in this is Casta. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So. so is it a taxable event? Like just given time? We're in Dubai. Yeah. It, it depends Dubai. on the country yeah. where you yeah. live. Yeah, yeah right. 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 Okay, okay. In Dubai, you can't apply for it. You have to have a residential KYC address somewhere in Europe, which I also don't have, so I can't have it. Yeah. 
Same problem. Yeah. But you, you can rent a house too with crypto. Yeah, in Dubai, actually, it's uh, uh, MR is the only real uh, estate uh, company which allows uh, buying real estate for crypto. But uh, there are a lot of uh, brokers uh, who as well allow uh, buying real estate for crypto, so it's easy. But these uh, brokers use some OTC companies. And another thing. Uh, like uh, in Dubai, uh, there were so many different uh, OTC companies which uh, could uh, cash out you, like you give them crypto, they give you cash, you can just bring your cash to the bank and nobody knows uh, the source of your funds, so it's pretty easy. Even nightclubs now stop taking crypto, like we were at uh, White uh, a few months ago and uh, we could pay our bill in crypto, they just bought out their wallet, we sent them USDT and we paid and like, like that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> because when you spend money in crypto, like let's say you spend ten thousand dollars in crypto, it doesn't feel like anything, yeah. at least yeah. to us. But if you spend ten thousand long on your like fiat bank account, you're like, oh shit, that's a lot of money. Or in cash. Yeah, yeah. in yeah. cash. Yeah. So. And you add on top of that that you're probably drunk and it's just. Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the guy when I was there, he asked for a, a two Bitcoin tip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm like I'm drunk, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, that's it for today. We're we could, we're gonna be here for some. some uh, okay, we're gonna do it. Well,